In this mock test, you will have 57 minutes to answer 50 multiple choice questions. A minimum of 43 correct answers is required to pass. When can you park on these markings outside a school? When you're picking up children? Not under any circumstances? When there's nowhere else available? When you're dropping off children? You shouldn't stop on yellow zigzag lines outside schools, not even to set down or pick up children or other passengers. This is to make sure passing drivers and pedestrians have an unobstructed view. You're driving on an open road in dry weather. What should the distance be between you and the vehicle in front? A two-second time gap. One car length. Two meters, six feet, six inches. Two car lengths. One way of checking there's a safe distance between you and the vehicle in front is to use the two-second rule. To check for a two-second time gap, choose a stationary object ahead, such as a bridge or a road sign. When the car in front passes the object, say, only a fool breaks the two-second rule. If you reach the object before you finish saying the phrase, you're too close and need to increase the gap. A police officer asks to see your documents. You don't have them with you. Within what time must you produce them at a police station? Five days. Seven days. Fourteen days. Twenty-one days. You don't have to carry around your vehicle's documents wherever you go. If a police officer asks to see them and you don't have them with you, you may be asked to produce them at a police station within seven days. You're driving in town. There's a bus at the bus stop on the other side of the road. Why should you be careful? The bus might have broken down. Pedestrians might come from behind the bus. The bus might move off suddenly. The bus might remain stationary. If you see a bus ahead, watch out for pedestrians. They might not be able to see you if they're crossing from behind the bus. Why can it be an advantage for traffic speed to stay constant over a longer distance? You'll do more stop-start driving. You'll use far more fuel. You'll be able to use more direct routes. Your overall journey time will normally improve. When traffic travels at a constant speed over a longer distance, journey times normally improve. You may feel that you could travel faster for short periods, but this generally leads to bunching and increased overall journey time. You're driving on this dual carriageway. Why may you need to slow down? There's a broken white line in the center. There are solid white lines on either side. There are roadworks ahead of you. There are no footpaths. Look well ahead and read any road signs as you drive. They're there to inform you of what's ahead. In this case, you may need to slow down and change direction. Check your mirrors so you know what's happening around you before you change speed or direction. 
Why should motorcyclists wear bright clothing? They must do so by law. It helps keep them cool in summer. The colors are popular. Drivers often do not see them. Motorcycles and scooters are generally smaller than other vehicles and can be difficult to see. Wearing bright clothing makes it easier for other road users to see a motorcyclist approaching, especially at junctions. Where are you most likely to be affected by side winds? On a narrow country lane. On an open stretch of road. On a busy stretch of road. On a long straight road. In windy conditions, care must be taken on exposed roads. A strong gust of wind can blow you off course. Watch out for other road users who are particularly likely to be affected, such as cyclists, motorcyclists, high-sided lorries, and vehicles towing trailers. You're on a three-lane motorway. There are red reflective studs on your left and white ones to your right. Which lane are you in? In the right-hand lane. In the middle lane. On the hard shoulder. In the left hand lane. The colours of the reflective studs on the motorway and their locations are red between the hard shoulder and the carriageway, white, between lanes, amber, between the carriageway and the central reservation, green, along slip road exits and entrances, bright green or yellow, at roadworks and contraflow systems. Why should you look particularly for motorcyclists and cyclists at junctions? They may want to turn into the side road. They may slow down to let you turn. They're harder to see. They might not see you turn. Cyclists and motorcyclists are smaller than other vehicles, and so are more difficult to see. They can easily be hidden from your view by cars parked near a junction. How can driving in an eco-safe manner help protect the environment? Through the legal enforcement of speed regulations, by increasing the number of cars on the road, through increased fuel bills, by reducing exhaust emissions. Eco-safe driving is all about becoming a more environmentally friendly driver. This will make your journeys more comfortable, as well as considerably reducing your fuel bills and reducing emissions that can damage the environment. You're following a long vehicle. As it approaches a crossroads, it signals left, but moves out to the right. What should you do? Get closer in order to pass it quickly. Stay well back and give it room. Assume the signal is wrong and that it's turning right. Overtake it as it starts to slow down. A long vehicle may need to swing out in the opposite direction as it approaches a turn to allow the rear wheels to clear the curb. Don't try to filter through if you see a gap. As the lorry turns, the gap will close. You're on a dual carriageway. Ahead, you see a vehicle with an amber flashing light. What could this be? An ambulance. A fire engine. A doctor on call. A disabled person's vehicle.
An amber flashing light on a vehicle indicates that it's slow moving. Battery powered vehicles used by disabled people are limited to 8 miles per hour. It isn't advisable for them to be used on dual carriageways where the speed limit exceeds 50 miles per hour. If they are, then an amber flashing light must be used. What should you do when parking your vehicle facing downhill? Turn the steering wheel towards the curb. Park close to the bumper of another car. Park with two wheels on the curb. Turn the steering wheel away from the curb. Turning the wheels towards the curb will allow them to act as a chock, preventing any forward movement of the vehicle. It will also help to leave your car in gear or select park if you have an automatic. A trailer must stay securely hitched to the towing vehicle. What additional safety device must be fitted to a trailer braking system? Stabilizer, jockey wheel, corner steadies, breakaway cable. In the event that the trailer becomes detached from the towing vehicle, the breakaway cable activates the trailer brakes before snapping. This allows the towing vehicle to get free of the trailer and out of danger. What does the term blind spot mean? An area covered by your right-hand mirror. An area not covered by your headlights. An area covered by your left-hand mirror. An area not visible to the driver. Modern vehicles provide the driver with a good view of both the road ahead and behind using well-positioned mirrors. However, the mirrors can't see every angle of the scene behind and to the sides of the vehicle. This is why it's essential that you know when and how to check your blind spots so that you're aware of any hidden hazards. You're driving past a line of parked cars. You notice a ball bouncing out into the road ahead. What should you do? Continue driving at the same speed and sound your horn. Continue driving at the same speed and flash your headlights. Slow down and be prepared to stop for children. Stop and wave the children across to fetch their ball. Beware of children playing in the street and running out into the road. If a ball bounces out from the pavement, slow down and be prepared to stop. Don't encourage anyone to retrieve it. Other road users may not see your signal, and you might lead a child into a dangerous situation. What does this sign mean? Hump bridge. Traffic calming hump. Low bridge. Uneven road. You'll need to slow down. At hump bridges, your view ahead will be restricted and the road will often be narrow. If the bridge is very steep, sound your horn to warn others of your approach. Going over the bridge too fast is highly dangerous to other road users and could even cause your wheels to leave the road with a resulting loss of control. You're parked on the road at night. Where must you use parking lights? Where there are continuous white lines in the middle of the road? where the speed limit exceeds 30 miles per hour, where you're facing oncoming traffic, where you're near a bus stop. When parking at night, park in the direction of the traffic. This will enable other road users to see the reflectors on the rear of your vehicle. Use your parking lights if the speed limit is over 30 miles per hour. When do windscreen pillars cause a serious obstruction to your view? 
When you're driving on a motorway, when you're driving on a dual carriageway, when you're approaching a one-way street, when you're approaching bends and junctions. Windscreen pillars can obstruct your view, particularly at bends and junctions. Look out for other road users, especially cyclists, motorcyclists and pedestrians, as they can easily be hidden by this obstruction. It's essential that tire pressures are checked regularly. When should this be done? After any lengthy journey? After traveling at high speed? When tires are hot? When tires are cold? Check the tire pressures when the tires are cold. This will give you a more accurate reading. The heat generated on a long journey will raise the pressure inside the tire. On a three-lane motorway, what does this sign mean? Use any lane except the hard shoulder. Use the hard shoulder only. Use the three right-hand lanes only. Use all the lanes, including the hard shoulder. You must obey mandatory speed limit signs above motorway lanes, including the hard shoulder. In this case, you can use the hard shoulder as a running lane, but you should look for any vehicles that may have broken down and may be blocking the hard shoulder. When should you flash your headlights at other road users? When showing that you're giving way? When showing that you're about to turn? When telling them that you have right of way? When letting them know that you're there? You should only flash your headlights to warn others of your presence. Don't use them to greet others, show impatience, or give priority to other road users, because they could misunderstand your signal. When may you drive over a footpath? To overtake slow-moving traffic. When the pavement is very wide. If there are no pedestrians nearby. To get onto a property. It's illegal to drive on or over a footpath, except to gain access to a property. If you need to cross a pavement, give priority to pedestrians. What does this sign mean? Vehicles may not park on the verge or footway. Vehicles may park on the left-hand side of the road only. Vehicles may park fully on the verge or footway. Vehicles may park on the right-hand side of the road only. In order to keep roads free from parked cars, there are some areas where you're allowed to park on the verge. Only do this where you see the sign. Parking on verges or footways anywhere else could lead to a fine. How will your vehicle be affected when you drive up steep hills? The higher gears will pull better. The steering will feel heavier. Overtaking will be easier. The engine will work harder. The engine will need more power to pull the vehicle up the hill. When approaching a steep hill, you should select a lower gear to help maintain your speed. You should do this without hesitation, so that you don't lose too much speed before engaging the lower gear. Where would you see a contraflow bus and cycle lane? On a dual carriageway? On a roundabout? On an urban motorway? On a one-way street?
The traffic permitted to use a contraflow lane travels in the opposite direction to traffic in the other lanes on the road. You're approaching a red light at a puffin crossing. Pedestrians are on the crossing. When will the red light change? When you start to edge forward onto the crossing. When the pedestrians have cleared the crossing. When the pedestrians push the button on the far side of the crossing. When a driver from the opposite direction reaches the crossing. A sensor will automatically detect that the pedestrians have reached a safe position. Don't drive on until the green light shows and it's safe for you to do so. You're following two cyclists. They approach a roundabout in the left-hand lane. In which direction should you expect the cyclist to go? Left, right, any direction, straight ahead. Cyclists approaching a roundabout in the left-hand lane may be turning right, but may not have been able to get into the correct lane due to heavy traffic. They may also feel safer keeping to the left all the way around the roundabout. Be aware of them and give them plenty of room. You're in a tunnel, your vehicle is on fire and you can't drive it. What should you do? Stay in the vehicle and close the windows. Switch on hazard warning lights. Leave the engine running. Switch off all your lights. It's usually better to drive a burning vehicle out of a tunnel. If you can't do this, pull over and stop at an emergency point if possible. Switch off the engine, use hazard warning lights, and leave the vehicle immediately. Call for help from the nearest emergency point. If you have an extinguisher, it may help to put out a small fire. But don't try to tackle a large one. What must you do at this junction? Stop behind the line, then edge forward to see clearly. Stop beyond the line at a point where you can see clearly. Stop only if there's traffic on the main road. Stop only if you're turning right. The stop sign has been put here because the view into the main road is poor. You must stop because it won't be possible to take proper observation while you're moving. When may you cross a double solid white line in the middle of the road? To pass traffic that's queuing back at a junction. To pass a car signalling to turn left ahead. To pass a road maintenance vehicle travelling at 10 miles per hour or less. To pass a vehicle that's towing a trailer. You may cross the solid white line to pass a stationary vehicle or to pass a pedal cycle, horse or road maintenance vehicle if it's travelling at 10 miles per hour or less. You may also cross the solid white line to enter a side road or access a property. You're having difficulty finding a parking space in a busy town. You can see there's space on the zigzag lines of a zebra crossing. Can you park there? No. Not unless you stay with your car. Yes in order to drop off a passenger. Yes, if you don't block people from crossing. No, not under any circumstances. It's an offence to park on the zigzag lines of a zebra crossing. You'll be causing an obstruction by obscuring the view of both pedestrians and drivers. You take some cough medicine given to you by a friend. What should you do before driving? Ask your friend if taking the medicine affected their driving.
Drink some strong coffee one hour before driving. Check the label to see if the medicine will affect your driving. Drive a short distance to see if the medicine is affecting your driving. If you've taken medicine, never drive without first checking what the side effects might be. They might affect your judgment and perception, and therefore endanger lives. You're about to overtake a slow-moving motorcyclist. Which one of these signs would make you take special care? In windy weather, watch out for motorcyclists and also cyclists, as they can be blown sideways into your path. When you pass them, leave plenty of room and check their position in your mirror before pulling back in. You're waiting at a pelican crossing. What does it mean when the red light changes to flashing amber? Wait for pedestrians on the crossing to clear. Move off immediately without any hesitation. Wait for the green light before moving off. Get ready and go when the continuous amber light shows. This light allows pedestrians already on the crossing to get to the other side in their own time, without being rushed. Don't rev your engine or start to move off while they're still crossing. When will your vehicle use more fuel? When its tires are underinflated? When its tires are of different makes? When its tires are overinflated? When its tires are new? Check your tyre pressures frequently, normally once a week. If they're lower than those recommended by the manufacturer, there will be more rolling resistance. The engine will have to work harder to overcome this, leading to increased fuel consumption. You're parked in a busy high street. What's the safest way to turn your vehicle around so you can go the opposite way? Find a quiet side road to turn around in. Drive into a side road and reverse into the main road. Get someone to stop the traffic. Do a U-turn. Make sure you carry out the manoeuvre without causing a hazard to other vehicles. Choose a place to turn that's safe and convenient for you and for other road users. You've broken down on a two-way road. You have a warning triangle. At least how far from your vehicle should you place the warning triangle? 5 meters, 16 feet. 25 meters, 82 feet. 45 meters, 147 feet. 100 meters, 328 feet. Advanced warning triangles fold flat and don't take up much room. Use one to warn other road users if your vehicle has broken down or if there has been an incident. Place it at least 45 meters, 147 feet behind your vehicle or the incident on the same side of the road or verge. Place it further back if the scene is hidden by, for example, a bend, hill or dip in the road. Don't use warning triangles on motorways. You're turning right at a crossroads. An oncoming driver is also turning right. What's the advantage of turning behind the oncoming vehicle? You'll have a clearer view of any approaching traffic. You'll use less fuel because you can stay in a higher gear. 
you'll have more time to turn. You'll be able to turn without stopping. When turning right at a crossroads where oncoming traffic is also turning right, it's generally safer to turn behind the approaching vehicle. This allows you a clear view of approaching traffic and is called turning offside to offside. However, some junctions, usually controlled by traffic light filters, are marked for vehicles to turn near side to near side. In which conditions will your overall stopping distance increase? In the rain. In fog. At night. In strong winds. Extra care should be taken in wet weather. On wet roads, your stopping distance could be doubled that in dry conditions. What can seriously affect your ability to concentrate? Drugs. Busy roads. Tinted windows. Contact lenses. Both recreational drugs and prescribed medicine can affect your concentration. It's also now an offence to drive with certain drugs in your body, and a positive test could lead to a conviction. At an incident, a casualty is unconscious but breathing. When should you move them? When an ambulance is on its way? When bystanders advise you to? When there's further danger? When bystanders will help you? Don't move a casualty unless there's further danger, for example, from other traffic or fire. They may have unseen or internal injuries. Moving them unnecessarily could cause further injury. Don't remove a motorcyclist's helmet unless it's essential. The red lights are flashing. What should you do when approaching this level crossing? Go through quickly. Go through carefully. Stop before the barrier. Switch on hazard warning lights. At level crossings, the red lights flash before and while the barrier is down. At most crossings, and amber lights will precede the red lights. You must stop behind the white line unless you've already crossed it when the amber light comes on. Never zigzag around half barriers. Which sign means that there may be people walking along the road? Always check the road signs. Triangular signs are warning signs. They inform you about hazards ahead and help you to anticipate any problems. There are a number of different signs showing pedestrians. Learn the meaning of each one. A long heavily laden lorry is taking a long time to overtake you. What should you do? Speed up. Slow down. Hold your speed. Change direction. A long lorry with a heavy load will need more time to pass you than a car, especially on an uphill stretch of road. Slow down and allow the lorry to pass. What does this sign mean? Bus station on the right. Contraflow bus lane. Withflow bus lane. Give way to buses.
There will also be markings on the road surface to indicate the bus lane. You mustn't use this lane for parking or overtaking. What will happen if you use rear fog lights in good conditions? They make it safer when towing a trailer. They protect you from larger vehicles. They dazzle other drivers. They make following drivers keep back. Rear fog lights shine more brightly than normal rear lights, so that they show up in reduced visibility. When the visibility improves, you must switch them off. This stops them dazzling the driver behind. What can a loose filler cap on your diesel fuel tank cause? It can make the engine difficult to start. It can make the road slippery for other road users. It can improve your vehicle's fuel consumption. It can increase the level of exhaust emissions. Diesel fuel can spill out if your filler cap isn't secured properly. This is most likely to occur on bends, junctions, and roundabouts, where it will make the road slippery, especially if it's wet. At the end of a dry spell of weather, the road surfaces may have a high level of diesel spillage that hasn't been washed away by rain. What do these motorway signs show? They're countdown markers to a bridge. They're distance markers to the next telephone. They're countdown markers to the next exit. They warn of a police control ahead. The exit from a motorway is indicated by countdown markers. These are positioned 90 meters, 100 yards apart, the first being 270 meters, 300 yards from the start of the slip road. Move into the left-hand lane well before you reach the start of the slip road.